Hello everyone, Cole here. It's Wednesday, August 5th, and I'm back with another midweek message from Selkirk United Church. First, a little laugh to start us off. A colleague of mine sent this in to an online ministry group that I'm part of, and it gave me a bit of a chuckle. So I'd like to share it with you. It's not a joke, but rather a true story, one of those ones that makes you shake your head at how we humans sometimes are with one another. So this is from Reverend Kay. She says, Gotta love ministry. First day back from vacation, I go to the church for the weekly community food bank, which is housed in our church. One of the volunteers, a member of the church who never comes to church because she doesn't like women ministers, never mind that the last three ministers have been women, asks me when in-person worship might be starting up again. <laughs> So maybe this is the answer for all of our churches. If the question is, how do we get more people coming to church? The answer is, stop having church for half a year. Don't allow anyone in the building. And then when you open back up, everyone will want to come, even those who never wanted to before. <laughs> I don't actually think that's a universal truth, but it seems to be working for Reverend Kay and at least one of her lapsed parishioners. I mean, I'm pretty sure Reverend Kay is still a woman, so that hasn't changed. But maybe that person's heart has changed. Maybe their mind has changed. Maybe they've seen the error of their ways and will be a model of good social, social justice-seeking Christianity from now on with a focus on equality. Let's hope so. Okay, that was a good start. So it's August already. And I know that many of you are wondering, what's next for the church? Well, I want to let you know that we do have a Selkirk United Church Council meeting coming up in a couple of weeks, and we'll be talking about that very topic. What's next? What will the future look like for us? How long will we be doing everything online, etc.? So before that council meeting in two weeks, we would love to hear from you. So we've got three questions for you to ponder and to respond to. We'd love to hear your thoughts. So please take a moment to jot some things down and send them along to us. Here are the three questions. One, what are you missing the most right now? And I'm sure a lot of you will say the church community, but try to be a bit more specific than that if you can. Give us some details. What are you missing most? Number two, what do you like best about our current online services and messages? Anything you'd like to see more of? What's working? And number three, what good ideas have you heard or seen from other churches or even nonprofits or businesses that, that we could consider at SUC in the future? Basically, we're looking for your input and your ideas, not just for worship, but for Sunday school, for our fundraisers, for our small groups, all the different things that happen at our church on a regular basis. Give our council members some food for thought. Help us out. Also, if you haven't tuned into the latest Questions for Cole episode, I encourage you to check that out too. The theme is a good match for this one. There's also three questions involved and it might get some of your creativity flowing. So that's a bit of homework for you all. You can send your ideas and your comments and your thoughts and your suggestions in to Chris. Her email is chris at selkirkunitedchurch.ca or to me, mine is cole at selkirkunitedchurch.ca Either one will be fine. The other topic I wanted to touch on for this midweek message is thankfulness. I just wanted to take a moment to offer my thanks to all of you who are being the church in all of the different ways that that is happening right now during this strange and frightening and challenging time of pandemic. I receive a lot of emails, texts, and phone calls from many of you each week letting me know about a need within the church family, someone who is having a tough time, someone who is recovering from a surgery, someone who needs a phone call, someone who is feeling particularly alone or isolated. And they're not all just requests for a phone call from me. Some of them are just sharing information along with a note that pastoral care is already being offered by the writer of the email and often by others too. The church family is caring for each other during this time in some very thoughtful and wonderful ways. And it is so heartwarming and encouraging to hear that, to hear those stories and to know that they're happening on a wide scale. So thank you. 
all of you who are part of that web of caring and compassion. It is much appreciated. You are being the church in the best way possible. And that is so good right now because it is so needed right now. There are a lot of needs. Some are noticeable and obvious and others not so much. So I encourage you all to keep looking for those opportunities to reach out to others and to make connections, especially with those who may be in need, but who may not be the ones who easily reach out for help. Let's continue to find the places where we are needed and be God's hands and feet, and eyes and ears and heart in all the different places that we can be as time goes on. Bless you all and all that you're doing. I'll see you next time.